to emulate. So I just thank you all for letting me be here tonight. Thank you, Lou. Um, you guys have been awesome in helping us, I believe, go to a new level in penetrating and taking Northern India for the gospel. Um, last year when I was here, it was just this total God thing where um, what um, um, Jake Hamilton was leading worship and he was preparing to go to India. God had just spoken to him uh, to join uh, Darren Wilson to go to India to make this movie. The same time in Varanasi, the, the same time that I spoke to Lou and a bunch of you guys about being the the um, geese flying over basically the air force, throwing and being like the, basically the bombers. That's how I view it as bombers, um, helping us the ground forces to take the land in northern India, um, and that just catalyzed something that just came together very rapidly. Uh, and Darren and his, his team ended up over there and by August, this was June of last year, they were there by August doing intercession on the Ganges River. And then Lou's team came, and how many of you were on that team that's here? How many of you? Okay, a few years. Wow, that's cool, cool, cool. And uh, so some of you guys got to come over and actually be a part of that invasion of darkness. <laughs> And you, you really helped us go. I believe that we have taken a step deeper and higher into penetrating basically the, um, uh, we would say Jericho, because this is what the Lord showed me. How many of you heard my story when I was here last, year, last time? No, most of you are new. How many of you were here this morning and heard my story this morning in the class? Okay, uh, some of you. Well, you're gonna. Uh, I'll tell some of it again. I'll, I'm trying to get around to teaching something. I want to teach something. Um, but you're gonna. You're gonna get some slides. You can go ahead and put the slides up there, and uh, we'll just do the short version tonight. So, um, but Lou, I just feel like saying, and you're, you're you're questioning where's the where's the call going from here? I remember being in the Nashville call. I was there. That was my first experience of, of, of sitting in that audience and just going, wow, at what God was doing through you and through that whole movement and, and going, this is what America needs. And I don't think we're done. I believe that we, America needs the call more than ever before. And America needs you more than ever before. And the anointing, the general, kingdom general anointing that you carry Guy, America needs that, other nations need that, but I think America really needs it. And so I'm praising God for what God's going to do in Berkeley. Wow, go get them. Um, let's believe God for awesome breakthrough. You know, being here, I'm like, this is what, I believe this is what God wanted when, he, when, he, when Jesus said, um, on this rock I will, uh, I will establish my church, and the word is, is, is ecclesia. I believe what we was really intending was something more like this gathering here than what we are doing in your traditional church service. And I have a whole teaching on that. I'm not going to go there, but man, I just want to encourage you guys. You are doing, I believe, what you, when you come together to this meeting and what Lou and his team are leading here, this is really what God intended the gathering of his believers to be like. It wasn't intended to be this navel-gazing kind of religious service. It was supposed to be this invading army where you, every one of you is being raised up to invade something for the kingdom. And, and it's not, I mean, what Jesus says, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be given to you. So you don't need to sit there and worry about your own problems and oh poor little me and oh I'm sick and I got this problem and please pray for me and all that. Get, let's get our focus on advancing the kingdom. You know, since I came in here tonight, I haven't heard anything about us. It's all been about the kingdom and how to, and, and interceding and crying out to God for those people out there that need Jesus. Or for those nations out there that need to be transformed by the principles of God's government. That's what, that's what, what Egbalo is all about. And so this is really what the heart of God is. And he's saying, I, I, I died on the cross for your sins. And, and, and I'm, I took the stripes on my back for your healing. Receive it, believe it, and go on with the with, with, and, and go on into invasion. Don't sit there in defense mode. Because Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to be in the defensive. You are the victorious army of God. You are the 
ones that have the authority over the devil, not the other way around. And so when we start to walk in that, we start to recognize who we are as kings and queens with God, given the authority to steward the earth through his power. Woo! Life starts getting exciting. But see, too many of us are in this maintenance mode. And we're like, okay, maybe we're not on the defensive, but we're kind of in maintenance. You're like, okay, let me just get through the day and go to work and come home and, you know, have my nice little family and go to church and, you know, and we're just kind of, uh, kind of coasting along through life. And that's not it either. You're going to have a boring life if that's all you want. Let's do some damage to the darkness out there. Let's do some damage to the demonic principalities out there. Let's find some demons to chase, and let's find some peoples in chains to set free. Praise God. That's where it gets exciting. Okay, cool. And this is what is happening right here in that follow. I mean, and this is why I, I just feel the joy of the Lord move as, as you're up here leading this, and as people are coming along, participating, interactive, everyone being a part. This is, I just feel the joy of the Lord. And I just feel Jesus saying, that's what I meant. That's what I wanted to look like. I wanted to be this invading army of victorious warriors with a focus on the kingdom, a bigger focus than just themselves. And I believe God's grace and healing and power and blessing is going to come down on every one of you as you're a part of this movement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so, uh, short version, okay? We can move this. Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to put it somewhere else. Thank you. Just get tangled up, making on. So, um, yeah. So, well, I was a horse trainer, and uh, I thought I was going to do horse training my whole life, and then I felt like I need some Bible training. I went to youth with a mission, and God just, just spoke to me very powerfully. Uh, just revealed Himself one night and said, "I'm sending you to the unreached nations." And I said, whoa, where'd that come from? That was the worst, that was the worst pizza I ever ate. Uh, and then I said, okay, okay, fine, 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 okay, give me some proof. And the Lord gave me John, he, he said, um, turn to Ezekiel chapter 36, start at verse 24. And I'm like, okay, I opened it up. I didn't even know where Ezekiel was. I'd never read Ezekiel. I opened it up and it says, I'm calling my people out of a land of idolatry. I'm taking away the stony heart, giving them a heart of flesh. And the Lord said, I'm sending you to an idolatrous nation to bring my people out. And then I said, um, anywhere but India. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not very smart. Anyway, so the next thing I heard was God said, start in India. And from that moment, I had this passion. For India. Within three days, I called up my dad and I said, Dad, sell the horse facility. He just built me this fantastic equestrian facility and was waiting for me to come home from this Bible school and begin using my college graduation gift, which is what he had built for me. And I had to call him up. I said, you know, Dad, uh, sell the horse facility. And he, that was very difficult because he wasn't yet a believer. And he hung up the phone on me, uh, which never happened. I'm an only child. I was homeschooled. And, very close family but but you know what from that point my dad up to this point had said well he thought well you're this this jesus stuff you're you're crazy after jesus well that's all the church brainwashed you and the the pastor told you something and you're just believing all this stuff well when i gave up the horses i gave up everything i had, had a desired in life in order to follow jesus then my dad had to realize that it was real wow. and so whenever you follow God radically and you're willing to give up something that you love for the kingdom and for what God's calling you to do, God will be faithful to you to re repay that. And so that's what happened. So I, I went, uh, basically my dad sold the horse facility. I continued. I was still in Wyoming. I said, God, where do you want me to go in India? And I got a dream three nights in a row. And that's where we have a map up there. You can see northern India and the Ganges River area. And I saw a dream with the demons ruling over the nation from the Ganges River and the Himalaya Mountains. And these demons had reins in their hands and whips as if they were driving chariots. And then I could see these, these and then back in those days, that was 1992, 
the, the movie Lord of the Rings hadn't been produced yet, but let me tell you, those demons looked like orcs. And they were, they were these wicked creatures, and they were, they were ruling, and these people that were bound, the terrains were made of chains, and the people were bound in slavery to the idol worship and the poverty and disease. And so then I came to know, well, okay, then I know I gotta go to northern India, now that's the stronghold. Then I started to study and came to know it's 20 million people, and what's your name behind there, yeah, doing the slides? When I do this, you can, you can change a slide, okay? So we're gonna go through this pretty fast. Birthplace of Hinduism and Buddhism, second largest population of Muslims in the world. One of the most strategic mission fields in the world. Um, called the graveyard of Christianity. 0.01% Christian back in that time. So I didn't know all this, but by, after God showed me Northern India, then I started to study and I came to understand all this stuff. And a uh, source of 10 of India's 14 prime ministers. So it's also the government stronghold over the nation as well as the spiritual stronghold. And so that's why the devil is holding on so tight to this region. He knows if he loses the Gangetic River area, he loses the nation. South India is like 30% Christian. Northeast India is 80% Christian. There's lots of Christians, lots of churches, orphanages, schools, Bible schools, you name it, in the rest of the nation. But there's hardly anything in this Ganges River area. Because when this place is liberated, we will get one-fifth of the world population for the kingdom. Woo! Okay, and then we got the humanitarian need is massive. We have 30 million destitute children out of 75 million total. Child labor, there's 19.2 million children not going to school. Most of them are engaged in child labor. India accounts for 45% of the world's modern slavery. That means people that are in, in bondage to debt and, and they're working in brick kilns, they're working in fields, and they don't have any rights of their own because they're so deeply in debt and bondage to their landlords. 15,000 children a year trafficked into sex slavery. Now, I don't know how many there is in Thailand. I know Thailand's got so much focus on Thailand, but I'll tell you, there's a huge situation in northern India and need to rescue children, okay? Um, child labor is out in the field as I had that one already and uh, so what origin of three world religions and I'm not going to tell you this story but this is the Ganges River bank of the Ganges River where the Lord had me start walking and praying up and down the river bank um, and claiming the land for the kingdom it's less than 1% Christian only three Christian children oh, yeah okay I told you that Next one. Um, the most strategic mission field in the world. I compared every nation in the world and I took this Gangetic Plain area of Uttar Pradesh out as if it was a nation because it would be the seventh largest nation if it was a nation, 200 million people. And I compared it to every other nation and it comes up second only to Bangladesh in um, population density compared to percent Christian. In, order, in other words, where have you got the most the people in a small geographic area who are unevangelized, who have not heard the gospel. And it comes out second only to Bangladesh, but Bangladesh being Muslim, it's not as easy to reach, okay? And then India being mostly Hindu, with the Pradesh being Hindu, where they're coming to Christ in the droves. Just down from that, the very next runner-up is, is less than half the harvest potential of this Gangetic Plain area. So it's very strategic. Um, oh yeah, I'll talk to you about those later. Let's just do the Indian stories. Keep going. So God gave me Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, I've given you the land. And he said, don't join any missionary groups. You're going to go and live with the Indian people. Well, everybody told me I was crazy, that that was nuts. You can't do that. You've got to join a mission group. And I didn't understand why shouldn't I just join the missionary group? I'm going to be a missionary, you know? But see, God is a God of strategy. I love your maps up here. This is fantastic. This means that you're, you're focused on strategy. You're focused on, on, on the, the strategies of the kingdom. And so God was giving me strategy, and I didn't even know it. But I had the grace to obey him. So I got on a plane with a one-way ticket and left my will for my parents to find because I was so convinced I was going to die. 
But believing that he was going to give me the land. Those are the shoes I, I used back in the early days to, to walk and, and tread the Ganges, okay? Um, there I am, I am with my, so I started, I took this uh, guitar and a bag of tracks and I used to go out and walk along the Ganges and, and worship the Lord in the Hindi language along the Ganges River where no one had ever worshipped Christ before, only Hindu worship. And then I started getting to go out in the villages with, there was a few people who were believers from southern, further down in southern India that had come to northern India as missionaries themselves to bring the gospel, try to bring the gospel to this Varanasi area. So they took me, because I'm living with these families, I'm living with this Indian family, I, they took me in the village with them. And slowly I started to see how effective the native people were in reaching their own people. See, when you share the gospel in the, the trade language of a nation, which like in for northern India, that's Hindi, or we think that's cool, right? Well, for, if you share the gospel in the trade language, they will not receive it as well as if you share it in the heart language of the nation. And the heart language is this little village dialect that nobody knows except the native people. And so these few little guys, that, the Hindus, that were starting to come to Christ, we started to have them go out and share the gospel with their own people, and people just started coming to Christ. And so that was when the Lord showed me that native people are the key to seeing a mighty movement to Christ in any, I believe, any unreached nation. Now, King David, how many remember King David that, were, that came with us to India? He is way, I think he's going to come online. Let's see if we can get him to, to just say hi to everybody. Is that okay? Yeah, he's on, I'm going to try to call him on Skype here and just let him say hi. That would be special, especially for you guys that know King David. Uh, that's, King David's the one on the right there. Okay, let's see. Rigging. So the way we met, his, see his real name is Shukpal, and that means servant of the god Shiva, the god Shiva being the main principality over Varanasi, and see God has a sense of humor, so, so the, the servant of the god Shiva is now the, the greatest, and I'll tell you, he's the apostle, not me, here he is, okay, hi David. Okay, you talk, Ellen, I'm holding your phone up next to the, uh, mic the, the, the microphone. you got to talk a little loud to say hi to everybody. Okay, there, say that again. Say some more stuff to him. I was just going to tell him your story. Okay. <laughs> Can I say what you have to say? Yeah, say. I just want to thank you for each one for praying. And uh, we are also praying for you. And, uh, we really had a wonderful time last year with you when you came here and prayed. Lord is bringing changes in our city. And as we believe that through prayer, with faith, we can see changes. Not only in Varnasi, we can see change in the whole world. So let's have faith and let's pray together to see the world transform. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, David. That's awesome. Here, who wants to say hi to you? Hi, David. Hey, we love you, man. We're praying for you. Thank you. I'm very much praying for you. You know what? Uh, Chavis, uh, Chavis is leading five nights a, a week now, uh, praying on this 40-day season of fasting uh, from, from 10 o'clock at night to midnight. We're carrying you, Varanasi, and the Ganges 
and we're believing for the 2020 network to, to, to go for it and we hope to see you uh, later on this year. Amen. Praise God. Give our love to all your church planters, okay? I'm sure I give our love to all of the people who came and who live right now with me. I will all right. All right. We love you, David. Love you. God bless. God bless you, bro. Okay. Thank you, David. Wow, that's cool, huh? That's, cool. Now that's the real apostle, okay? I should put the picture of them of him when he's skinny up there that you guys got to see this morning, right? They, when I met him, he was being beaten and starved every day by his Hindu relatives who were in opposition to his faith. But even in that situation, he was being faithful to the call of God to come back to his home city of Varanasi and bring the gospel. And today he has grown into the prophetic word the Lord gave me over his life that he would not be just should Paul, he would be King David for his people in the eastern region of northern India. So praise God, you just got to say hi to a real indigenous apostle that has suffered for the gospel, that has planted hundreds of churches, and that is now leading multiple generations of indigenous leaders. Um, and it's my privilege to be able to serve and to raise up these true indigenous apostles. That's what I do and what Telesia Ministries does today is we raise up and nurture and serve the indigenous people, the indigenous apostolic movements in these countries. Okay, let's go ahead. So the 2020 network is now what you guys are really behind and you're helping and praying for this. We're believing by the year 2020 to see 20% of the Gangetic plain following Christ. Okay, right now we got 1%. We might have more than that. I'll show you that in a minute. We're going to go through these slides real quickly. Hey, there we go. There's, uh, I didn't even get many pictures of you guys with us, but there's one of them. We had uh, Lou and his team in our pickup truck, and then we, we decided we better move Lou inside of the, the, the cab of the pickup real soon. <laughs> and there we're praying over the Buddhist stronghold and interceding over that area. And this is a, one of the mission, YWAM missionaries, I think, that's doing some work there. And the last one is we're seeing them off there at the, uh, at the airport. But we just had an amazing time. We want to thank you guys for uh, coming out and being with us and doing some very strategic warfare along the bank of the Ganges River. Okay, uh, keep going. Yeah, so that's where we're, the two locations, of course, Varanasi is the lower right hand uh, star there. That's our two headquarter locations. Um, Book of Acts is happening. Let's just, these are, oops, I have duplicates here. Keep going. Uh, this pastor, he's one of the native apostles out there planting churches. He was basically legion until God delivered him. He used to wait alongside the road and come out and attack people because he was so demonized. Now he's one of the best church planters. Um, this is how we teach strategic multiplication. We teach the churches to go plant churches and raise up new leaders and then those leaders should go and raise up more leaders and plant churches and so it's a multiplication. We teach the, the, uh, the little uh, villagers that are illiterate. This is how we're teaching the illiterate people to share the gospel. They can't read, they can't really follow along any kind of a, a plan to share the gospel, but so we teach them these hand motions that helps them to internalize the